can you tell which of these is the Pixel and which one is the iPhone? The profile is very similar. Jeez. Beautiful. Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Jab, and this is the new Google Pixel 9 Pro XL. And it feels kind of weird making this video in August. Normally, we get new Pixels around October time, but they've actually jumped ahead of the new iPhone launch at the end of September and the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 4 chip and the subsequent phones coming later in the year. So what's new with the Pixel 9 Pro and Pro XL, which I have here, is it actually a big upgrade over the 8 Pro? And should you buy one? I do have to stress though, this video is not sponsored in any way. Team Pixel, Google have no expectation or input on this review video. This is 100% my opinion. And except for the YouTube ads at the start of the video, I'm not making any money on this. Let me give you the headlines. And we have a fresh new look. We have thinner bezels, a slightly bigger screen that's also brighter. We get the new Tensor G4 chip, 16 gigs of RAM, up from 12. We have beefier speakers. We have a longer battery life, yay, and faster charging. And in the camera department, we have an improved ultra wide with a wider aperture. We have a new selfie camera bumped from 10 up to 42 megapixels and with a wider field of view. And of course, a whole bunch of new AI and camera features, including AdMe, which lets you literally add yourself or the photographer to the shot that they're not in by taking a couple of photos and having it superimposed on top of each other. What is real anymore? Who knows? You've got Video Boost, which also unlocks a new 8K resolution option. So I'm gonna spend a good portion of this video talking about the camera and everything you can do with it. And it's 100 pounds more expensive than last year. Although, relatively, it is still 150 quid cheaper than a S24 Ultra and 100 pounds less than an iPhone 15 Pro Max. So still just a little bit cheaper than the flagship rivals out there, but not significantly. And it is also a 100 pound price bump over last year's Pixel 8 Pro. You can still get a Pixel 9 Pro, which is the same price, 999. Uh, the main difference is the screen size. We're also getting a relatively bigger battery, slightly faster charging, but that's about it. The difference between the 9 Pro and the 9 Pro XL is really just the screen size. Do you want a 6.3 or a 6.8 inch phone? So the first thing you'll notice this year is this refresh design. And side by side with the 8 Pro, here's one I made earlier, gone are the curvy edges around the back. Gone is the wraparound Geordie LaForge camera module. Instead, the Pixel 9 Pro XL gives us completely flat edges with a glossy metal finish, a more stuck on rounded camera bump, which is about half as thick as the bloody phone itself. But I do like the look and it's nice to have a phone that doesn't lump all the cameras in one corner and it doesn't wobble on the table. Similar camera setup though, we've got the main, the ultra wide and the telephoto alongside a spectral light sensor for the sort of white balance and also the thermometer, which I've used once, I think. I don't know why we have that. Surprisingly though, the speakers are much better, richer, louder, there's less distortion at higher volumes. Forget even entertaining somebody else's opinion or respecting their wishes. What are you practically on about? Although I do find myself accidentally covering the speaker grill when I'm holding it in landscape to watch a show or play a game. So I need to either adjust my grip or flip it around. They've also finally updated the USB port to support display out. This is a first for a Pixel and it means you can mirror to external screens or a pair of smart glasses like these X-Reels. And along with face unlocking, we now have a new ultrasonic fingerprint reader instead of optical, which I found to be quite a bit quicker and more reliable. Up front, Google have squeezed in a bigger 6.8 inch screen, up from 6.7 last year. And you can just about see the difference if you have them side by side. It does feel bigger to hold, although that's mostly due to having that flat rather than curved back. Still Gorilla Glass Victors 2 though on both sides, same as before. However, the 9 Pro XL is 0.3 millimeters thicker and eight grams heavier, tipping the scales at 221 grams, which, and this can't be a coincidence, is the exact same weight as an iPhone 15 Pro Max. Hmm. Still, it passed the most important test. My wife, Sarah, who is an avid Pixel user, she's been using the 6 and 7 and 8, so I handed it over and her first reaction was, ooh, I like it, which is a very positive sign. So as far as the wife test goes, 10 out of 10. And finally, no new phone launch will be complete without some tasty new colors. And both the 9 Pro and the 9 Pro XL come in porcelain, the one I have here, obsidian, black basically, a hazily green and a rose quartz. Very fancy. But let's talk about this screen, which Google call their Super Actua or Super Actua screen. 
So it's a 0.1 inch bigger screen, but more importantly, it's also brighter. Google say that the peak brightness, so that's the peak maximum on a 5% window has gone from 2400 nits to 3000 nits, and full screen HDR brightness has gone from 1600 to 2000 nits. Although in my tests for both SDR and HDR, I measured around a two to 300 nit boost. It's not a night and day difference, but it does make it easier to use outside. Everything just looks a bit punchier and more vibrant. However, despite the improved cooling and the slightly more efficient chip and also the brighter screen, that after just a couple of minutes of using the Pixel outside in the sun, taking photos, the screen massively dimmed. I couldn't get it any brighter and it actually made it really hard to use, literally just after a couple of minutes. But of course, most phones, including iPhones, do this as well. They've also massively improved the viewing angles. The A Pro goes really off color with a kind of green tinge when it's off angle. And just generally, I found the 9 Pro's colors a little bit warmer and more natural. I like it although I would recommend changing the default high resolution to full resolution. It'll have a small impact on the battery, but I just find it a little soft and low res out of the box. Unfortunately, both the 8 and the 9 series have the same 240 Hz PWM dimming. And for context, the S24 Ultra and the iPhone are around 480 Hz, which is still considered not great. And this flicker can cause eye strain with some people very sensitive to it. Now, in some ways, the Achilles heel of these Pixel phones has always been the processor, the Google Tensor, which is built on Samsung's Exynos architecture. They've got progressively a little bit better and better each year, but it's just never kept up with the competition from Apple and Snapdragon, particularly in terms of performance. Now, Google have always said that they favor efficiency and AI performance over, you know, raw horsepower for gaming. But then the battery life's always been pretty terrible on Pixel phones as well. And a lot of the AI is done in the cloud anyway. So Tensor, G4 this year, G2, G3, G4, is it any better? Well, to get nerdy just for a second, this new G4 actually has eight cores, uh, one fewer than last year, but the other newer Cortex-X4s, rather well, than X3, we have the same Mali 715 graphics, but we do now have 16 gigs of RAM versus 12, although it does appear to be a slightly slower type of RAM. What does this all add up to? Well, in Geekbench 6, the 9 Pro XL is 14% faster in single core and 5% in multi-core. Not very exciting. And switching over to the 3D Mark graphics test, the best loop score is less than 5% higher than last year. However, what is more interesting is the low score, which is 16% higher. The Pixel 9 Pros have a new heatsink, which really is doing the heavy lifting here in place of a much faster chip, but it is giving us this more stable performance. And it is worth noting that the regular Pixel 9 doesn't have this new design. Google say the G4 will make apps launch 17% faster and web browsing 20% faster, but the Tensor G4 is still very much in the championship, whereas the uh, Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and the Apple A17 Pro is in the Premier League. And they're both about to be updated with the A18 and the Snapdragon 8 Gen 4, so this is going to fall even further behind in the next few months. But does any of this actually matter? Well, most of the time, no, not really. In fact, the Pixel still feels like one of the fastest and most responsive phones in everyday use, thanks to the stock Android 14 software. But at the same time, it feels just as fast as the Pixel 8 Pro, and it still struggles in high-end games. I fired up some Genshin Impact, which can actually get a flawless or near flawless 60 FPS maxed out on the current iPhone and uh, Snapdragon rivals. But here, I'm still getting frequent dips below 20. For most games, you'll be absolutely fine. But I'd still say the Pixel 9 Pro is not a hardcore gamer's phone. But for everyone else, the benchmark scores don't really mean that much. It is still incredibly fast and a joy to use. And even though it's not significantly faster, it does last longer. Yes, the battery life has been improved. It shares basically the same size cell as the 8 Pro, but have a look at this YouTube video time lapse I made. The Pixel 7 Pro and 8 Pro are within five minutes of each other, just shy of 12 hours, but the 9 Pro XL just keeps going, finally kicking the bucket four hours later. The S24 Ultra and the iPhone do still come out on top, but it's putting up a good fight and it is a big improvement. Google has also boosted the charging speeds with the Pixel 9 series. Uh, it's actually a little bit different across all four phones they're launching. They've got the 9, 9 Pro, 9 Pro XL, and the Pixel 9 Pro Fold. But essentially, the Pixel 9 Pro XL has the fastest charging for both wide and wireless. But still, you will need the fast chargers to actually take advantage of that, or else you won't see any difference. And it does not support Qi 2. It's still hard to get my head around this, though, because the Tensor chip has got progressively better, and yes, it's a tiny bit faster, a bit more stable, much longer battery life in some use cases, which is great to see. 
but it still, still falls some way behind the rivals, which are themselves about to be updated. It's like celebrating it being a bit less rubbish than it was before. And the expectation next year is that they'll switch to a new uh, architecture built by TSMC rather than Samsung. So the Pixel 10 and whatever G5 chip they use could be actually a more significant upgrade. So if you're on the fence about this and you do care about having the best performance, could be worth waiting another year. Now for me, and probably you as well, there are four main reasons to get a Pixel. You've got stock Android, it's the first to get updates, it's slightly better value, or at least a little bit cheaper than Rivals, and it's also the camera. So what's new this year? Well, hardware-wise, not a whole lot. Uh, on the back, we have the same triple lens setup. The only hardware change is the ultra-wide camera, which now has a f1.7 aperture versus f2 last year. So a little bit wider, better in low light. And we have a new 42 megapixel selfie camera with a significantly wider field of view. To give you an idea of the difference in field of view, let's switch it over to the 9 Pro XL. Boom, okay, here we are, 9 Pro XL. And I'm holding it in the exact same position. Everything's the same but you can see a little bit more over here, a little bit more over here. Both the 8 Pro and the 9 Pro XL can shoot up to 4K60 with the selfie camera. Straight away, just I'm looking at the screen as I can see that wider field of view on the new one. But what do you think in terms of the quality? That's the problem. You can never compare uh, phone cameras based on the screens themselves, on the phones, because the screens are different. So you have to take them off, look on the laptop, and that's what I'll be doing. In fact, I've just uh, taken off my battery test there, which took 17 hours to record, uh, thankfully with a time lapse. Now I would say that photo quality isn't drastically different. In fact, you'd be hard pressed to tell them apart in some cases, aside from the wider field of view. There is a little less of the over-processed, over-sharpened look, and also noticeably less noise in lower light. What I would say though is for low light selfies, use screen illumination, which is insanely bright, but I find it produces much nicer, much more realistic looking night mode selfies. Okay, let's switch around to the back, and I want to stick with these comparative shots for the moment versus last year's 8 Pro because I think it's needed in order to really see what's different this year because it is subtle. Firstly, I found the colors on the new 9 Pro XL to be just a little bit more natural and true to life. My black t-shirt is black here rather than dark blue. The white balance is much more aggressive on the 9 Pro at diffusing that bright orange and balancing the colors across the scene. Dare I say it's leaning toward more of an iPhone aesthetic? I think a full comparison is needed. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. The thing is though, the main camera sensor, resolution, aperture, all the same. The bigger difference though is with long range zoom. It still maxes out at their 30 times super res zoom as they call it, but there does appear to be significantly more detail on the 9 Pro shot of old JC here. Let me show you another one here, zooming in on the side of the pub and going up to 30 times. There is a lot more detail in the text. So for me, the Pixel has always excelled at photography, including portraits. And while the differences from the 8 to the 9 series isn't anything too revolutionary, it does produce a nicer, cleaner, less noisy, more natural shot. It's like, I don't know, 15% better. Let's go back to video though. This is Wells Cathedral, and I'm filming this at 4K30 with the 8 Pro and the 9 Pro XL. Very similar in terms of quality and image stabilization with a one times lens here, but punching in, colors are again a bit more natural like we saw with photos, but particularly when zoomed in all the way up to the 20 times, neither are perfect, but the 9 Pro XL is much smoother. So it's a bit niche, but for super long range video, the 9 Pro does have better stabilization. Now you thought this video couldn't get any better, right? Well, come with me to the Taylor Swift Eras Tour concert at Wembley Stadium here in London. I went with Mrs. Tech Chap and a couple of friends, and obviously being a tech nerd, I also have four different phones in my pocket. The iPhone, the Samsung, uh, the Pixel, and also something else I can't tell you just yet. But let me just show you a couple of photos and videos I took, because I will say between the S24 Ultra, the iPhone 15 Pro Max, and the Pixel 9 Pro XL, in my experience, the Samsung is still the zoom king, which is actually kind of interesting given they all have five times telephoto lenses. Why is it still blurry? That's all the resolution we have. Making it bigger doesn't make it clearer. It does on CSI Miami. Ugh. But one thing I was excited to test on the Pixel was the new zoom enhance feature. Straight out of a cheesy Hollywood action movie where they say, you know, zoom in, enhance, and then somehow they can see the license plate or the person's face. Technology that just didn't exist then. But now with AI, actually we are getting some zoom enhance action going on, but it's nothing 
crazy, if I'm honest. In the dozen or so times I've tested this over the last couple of weeks, I've never been particularly blown away by the results. It's just a bit cleaner, a little bit sharper. It doesn't suddenly bring the Pixel up to the same standard as the S2A4. Now, we couldn't have a new phone release without talking about AI. And in many ways, Pixel were actually ahead of the game with Magic Eraser, Audio Eraser. The thing is, though, a lot of this cool Eraser stuff can be done within the Google Photos app on any phone and using any picture. It's not exclusive to getting a new one of these. Now, what is new with the Pixel 9 uh, series here is Add Me, because this is like one of the headline new camera AI features. And I want to give you a bit of a live demonstration, because there's me here, Mrs. TechChap, and our friend Mara. And I want to take a nice, high-quality picture with the rear camera cameras, you take the first picture and then you switch the photographer. So I'm now going to jump in the frame. Mrs. Tech Chap's going to come out and hold the camera. And you've got this kind of ghostly AR guy to help frame where I should then be. Take the second photo and it composites them together. And the results are pretty good. It definitely got a few wows from the group, but it's not flawless. You can sometimes see the stitching lines. Uh, the perspective can be a little bit odd sometimes. And it's also just a little bit of a faff to explain to your friends how this works each time but still no manual photoshopping involved. And as far as I'm aware, there aren't any other phones that offer this kind of feature. And I also really like this portrait light option where I can literally move a light source around the frame to kind of highlight and expose different elements. And it does a good job of making your portraits pop a little bit more, but still looking natural. And between portrait and portrait light and unblur and zoom enhance and reframing and video boosting, magic eraser, audio eraser, add me, you have so many options with Pixel and Google Photos to tweak and play with and basically create entirely new images right from your phone. How much you want to use this stuff? Up to you, but it is nice to have it there at your fingertips. And it is still one of my absolute favorite phones for astrophotography. Grab a Gorilla Pod, stick it in your garden, and four minutes later, you've got this. And with a bit of a Lightroom touch up, not too shabby, but also not significantly different to last year. The Pixel 9 Pros can also now shoot in 8K, but only when you have this video boost enabled. Now, video boost was introduced on last year's Pixel 8 series, although a few months after launch around Christmas time, and this video boost can either help get you to a higher 8K resolution or for better low light video, like a night video boost. And essentially you shoot the video and then you get a 1080p lower quality kind of proxy preview file, if you will. And then it uploads the main video to Google servers and then their cloud AI does some wizardry to upscale and boost your video. It can take a bit of time. It does of course need an internet connection, but it certainly can give you better video than you would otherwise get just from the camera hardware of the Pixel itself. We've also got a couple of new apps, one of which is screenshots, and I just don't really understand this. We have a screenshot album tab in Google Photos anyway, but essentially this is like an AI optimized way of searching within all your receipts and screenshots. Although for my uh, train journey from London to Bristol, it thinks it's a flight, so I'm departing from the airport of London Paddington. But anyway, more exciting is this new Pixel Studio app. And this is kind of your one-stop shop for AI image generation. Whether you want to create an entirely new image, like a puppy using a laptop on a beach in the sunset, which comes out incredibly well, actually. I think that looks fantastic. But I have been running into a few issues where it says it just can't make this yet, or it can't deal with people yet. Although to be fair, if you look at the top there, it does say this is a preview. So hopefully this will get better with time. But within the Studio app, you can also open up your own photos and reimagine them, which is actually closer to Samsung's sketch to image. And it's a lot of fun to play around with. And they have kept it quite restricted, fairly limited. So you're not gonna come up with anything too edgy or dangerous or inappropriate. But for reframing or adding some fun stuff to your photos, definitely worth having a play with. We also get a brand new weather app. You get Google's Gemini Advanced for free for a year. And with Gemini Live, you can actually have a back and forth live chat, which is very similar to what you can do with the ChatGPT app if you subscribe. Although be wary that it can be wrong, confidently wrong. Unfortunately, there is no phone model called the Pixel 9 Pro XL. And finally, Google promised seven years of OS updates, which I suppose will take us up to Android 21. Maybe Android 20, because they count 14 as the first one. Anyway, a lot of support with this. And also, of course, being a Pixel, this will get the updates first, including any fancy new AI features. I think the bigger question, though, is why not save several hundred dollars and just go for a regular Pixel 9? It's 300 pounds less than the 9 Pro XL, and all you're really sacrificing is the bigger screen. It's 6.3 inches, same as the 9 Pro. We also get a little bit less RAM, 12 gigs of the stuff. We do miss out on the new thermal design, so that could impact the stability and the performance. The camera is also a bit of a downgrade. We don't get the new improved ultra wide. We get the same 10 megapixel selfie as last year. You don't get the free year of Gemini Advanced. 
uh, slightly slower charging, slightly different design uh, with the matte aluminium edges rather than the glossy, which you actually may prefer. It's not a significant hardware difference between the regular Pixel and the Pro series with the Pro and the Pro XL, which is good because it means you can get a really good Pixel phone um, for a lot less money, for like 800 pounds-ish. But certainly if you want the biggest and the best Pixel, then you're gonna want the 9 Pro XL. The Tech Chap is a YouTube channel based in the UK that provides technology news, reviews, and analysis. The channel has over 1.48 million subscribers and 1K videos. And so that is the Google Pixel 9 Pro XL. What do we think? For me, it's an iterative update, ob update, <laughs> update, upgrade. Uh, it's iterative, it's, it's evolutionary. I think if you're on a Pixel 8 Pro or a Pixel 7 Pro, it's probably not worth upgrading. Anything older, yeah, it's worth it. If you are G1, sure. But the current competition this faces will be replaced very quickly. So it could be worth seeing how they compare. Although in favor of ordering one now, Google do offer some quite good deals. Uh, they're actually offering some free storage upgrades, but I'd also be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit disappointed by that G4 performance. Yes, it's better, but it's still not good enough. And that's where I think we might have to wait for next year's Pixel 10 with that new architecture chip to get some proper upgrades. But what do you reckon? Are you tempted to buy one? Let me know what you make of the Pixel in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, a cheeky like and subscribe would be fantastic. And I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.